How do you buy hi-fi in this day and age? It's a little bit more difficult than you think, isn't it? Back in the 70s, it was oh so much easier. Back then, you'd take a copy of War of the Worlds, you'd find the nearest dealer who's never that far away from you, you'd have about three gallons of coffee, you'd listen to 10 billion products, you'd leave, end the story, you know? End of the day, you'd have what you wanted, when you wanted, you'd be listening that night to whatever it is you bought, Great! Nowadays there's a problem because firstly there are not as many dealers around as there used to be and secondly we're bombarded by choice. There's a whole lot more stuff you can buy. There's a whole lot more stuff which is reviewed and all of that causes confusion and what makes it worse is there's a whole lot more people out there offering advice, buying decision, professionals, hi-fi users and everybody in between. It causes a lot of hassle and confusion. So what to do? How do you buy hi-fi? Let me tell you a quick story. I know a CEO of a very well-known brand and what he likes to do is to visit all of his dealers. He likes to see them face to face, see if there's any issues and he can source it there and then. This is great. He was at one particular dealer this one particular day and the dealer itself was a, a, had a shop front. It was on a high street. And uh, my CEO friend was talking to the owner behind the counter with a sales guy there too. And this chap walked in holding a magazine. And as he walked to the counter, he opened this magazine and the sales guy said, uh, uh, hello, uh, how can I help you? And this chap said, I'd like to buy an amplifier. And the uh, sales guy said, uh, sure, uh, any particular one you had in mind? And the chap opened this magazine and he said, that one. And the sales guy looked and he saw it was, an, I think it was an amplifier. It could have been a pioneer, but it doesn't really matter. And the sales guy said, uh, yeah, uh, we've got one of those. Um, no problem. If you'd like to follow me into the listening room behind, I'll put the kettle on. We can have a little listen. The guy said, uh, no, I'm fine. I'll just buy it now. The sales guy said, uh, yeah, sure. Just to let you know that there are other uh, amplifiers that we stock in the same sort of price brackets. We could do a little compare and contrast just so you're happy and you make sure you're happy with your purchase. And the guy said, no, nope, no, I'm fine. I'll just buy it now. So after a short time, the sales assistant realized this guy just wanted his amplifier. So he stopped. So he grabbed the amp from storage. Cash was exchanged. Out the door went the guy. What I found out subsequently was, during the conversation, this particular chap had based his entire buying decision on this review. The review he he'd pointed out in this magazine had received five stars and a glowing review. This guy had read the review and bought the amplifier on nothing but this one review. That's what I heard. Now, there may be a backstory to this chap. I don't want to be judgmental. There may have been reasons why he did what he did, and that's fine. But just looking at the surface of this transaction, just looking at it as a sort of for what, it, for what it is, from what I heard, it was the wrong thing to do. So why was it wrong? Because when he takes it home, you might hate it. He, his ears, his bias, his likes and dislikes will all come into play. They'll all kick in. He may hate this amp. The critic and he may have totally different opinions on music and hi-fi and what good sound means. So... Taking one person's opinion, no matter how professional, no matter how great the reviewer, you're asking for trouble. If, if you base your entire music purchase decision on this one chap, this one guy or girl. So how do you buy hi-fi? What do you do? What's the recommend, recommended way of buying a piece of hi-fi? Well, we started in a dealer, so let's, let's continue with the dealer. If you have access to a dealer, Use that dealer. That dealer not only has a wide range of stock, but that dealer normally has some sort of listening room, as we heard earlier. So you're able then to listen to your desired piece of hi-fi equipment, ideally compared to two, three, four other similar priced pieces of equipment. That's a great thing, because you're able to use your ears, and your ears are your best weapons when buying any piece of hi-fi. They're the things you need to rely on. They're the things you need to trust. So if you can access a dealer, if you can go to a dealer and listen to different pieces of equipment, do so. 
If you've got one nearby in walking distance or, you know, a short bus ride or train ride away, great. If you have to travel a couple of hours, do it. I recommend doing it. If you have to stay the night to get to your dealer, if your dealer is that far away, if you're spending enough money, it will still be worth it. Now, if you're just like buying a something which is worth, say, I don't know, £80, and it's going to cost you £100 to stay overnight somewhere, then you might want to think twice. Sure, OK, it might not be worth it. But if you're buying a turntable for, I don't know, £4,000, that's a lot of money. That might very well be worth it for you to stay the night somewhere in some average hotel, shall we say. So it might be worth your while, if you're spending a lot of cash, to stay the night to visit your dealer. If you get into that situation, warn your dealer that you're coming. Tell him beforehand. Have a conversation. Make him understand that you're coming to see him and what time you'll be there. Make him understand how much money you're looking to spend. Make him understand that you want him to be all over you in terms of equipment he's going to show you, time he's going to commit to you. Get an agreement that he will do all these things for you, that he will compare and contrast a few turntables or amplifiers or speakers or whatever they are, and that he's going to give you time to make that decision, okay? You don't want to turn up after travelling and stay in the night, and the guy says, uh, hey, oh no, can't do it now, I haven't got any time. You would be crushed and annoyed. I would be. I'd be very upset. So prepare. Talk to the guy before you go down to the, to the dealer. You know, prepare. So use a dealer's facilities. Use his listening room. Use his stock. Use his experience. Have a conversation with this chap. I know he's trying to sell you stuff, but he knows he's been around Hi-Fi probably for a long time. So fine, understand that he's trying to sell you stuff. You know, be, be aware of that. But also, he has information. He might be able to help in some way. So that's the dealer. The other person, and, and the dealers are very important, fine. Listening to the gear is critical. Right. But what if you go to a dealer and it hasn't got the item you're looking for? Doesn't matter. Look for something else of a similar price point. Get to know what sort of, what sort of sound quality of that price point sounds like, you know? So, for example, if you're, if you're looking for, I don't know, say like a Riga amplifier, and uh, your nearest dealer only stocks, say, uh, Cyrus or Heed, uh, but in a similar price point, go listen to them. Then you'll have a rough idea what, what an amplifier in that price point should sound like, how far it goes, the pros and cons. And then look for another dealer which sells maybe just the Riga. But you'll have a rough idea in your head, your memory of what, what to expect. So when you go to see the Riga in the end, and maybe Riga's all he has in that price point and nothing else, again, I know it's not ideal because it'd be great to do a quick AB there and then, but at least you've heard, at least you've, you know what to expect from the Riga when you finally get to hear it. So don't be content with going to one dealer. Go to two, go to three. It depends how valuable the cash is that you've got, you know? It depends how important the buying decision is. Go the extra mile. That's what I would say, personally. Okay, so that's the dealer. What else can we look at? Well, we can look at critics, people like me. I've spent a long time reviewing Hi-Fi in national magazines on my site. I'm all over social media. There are many other people like me, many of my colleagues uh, and friends out there who do a similar a job that I do. Lots of people who write for magazines, colleagues and friends who, who write for magazines. They're all reviewing and, and giving advice. Uh, listen to them all. But choose the critic for you. The way I think, what I say, how I present myself, uh, what I think is good and bad and hi-fi might not be what you're looking for. You might disagree with the things I think are important. Those things that I, that I dislike, you might think are, are exactly what you want. So maybe I'm not the critic for you then. So you need to find that critic. You need to, you need to whether it's a critic in a magazine, whether it's somebody who runs their own website, maybe it's somebody who works for a website on a paid basis, you know, one of those bigger websites. Whoever it is. So go find your critic. Go find that person who 
whose beliefs are similar to you, hi-fi beliefs, musical beliefs, are similar to you, the things that are important to you in terms of hi-fi music, you want to find a critic who thinks in a similar way, goes down a similar pathway to you, you know? It's sympathetic. That's the sort of critic you want. Filter your critics, okay? Like I say, it could be any critic. That's why you need to buy all the magazines. You need to get to know those critics, you know? It doesn't matter what they're reviewing. Just, just read their style, listen to their opinions, and you think, yeah, this guy, uh, this guy knows what he's talking about, or this guy, or this guy obviously doesn't. You know, what is he talking? This, ah, oh, that's just ridiculous. So you forget him, you move on to the next guy, okay? Whoever that might be, and take notes. And then, if you think, you know, he reviewed these speakers, and I like, I like his style. I like what he's saying. I like how he does it. Make a note of this person's name, mental note or physical note. And keep a lookout for other stuff they're doing in the future. That might be of value to you, you know? So find your critic. Find the person who is, who is sympathetic to how you think, your, your hi-fi and musical beliefs. Add that to your research, okay? Use their knowledge. If they're approachable, if you can contact them via social media, say someone like me, I get, I get uh, requests for advice all the time. As I'm talking now, I've had three or four today, as, as I'm talking to you now, on the day I'm making this video. People approach me all the time for hi-fi advice. <clears throat> if they're available on social media, great, because it means you, you know, there's probably an email address or some sort of uh, contactable way, website, whatever, of, of talking to them. So go talk to them. Social media platforms are excellent, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Because there you will find people who use probably the same kit that you're looking for, you know? If you're looking for a phono amp, there may be people on social media who use that phono amp. So you can say, what do you think of this phono amp? What are the pros and cons? Why did you buy it? Why did you buy that one and not this one? You know, uh, where did you buy it from? What were they like as, as, a, as a retailer? Do you recommend them? You need to ask questions, and that's what you need to do. That's the approach. That's the attitude. You need to ask lots and lots and lots of questions. What I would not recommend is for you to do this. You go into a Facebook group, say. You say, I have a thousand pounds. I want to buy a turntable. You get five people saying, get this one. You say, okay, guys, bye, and you walk out the door. Don't do that. Don't be told what to do. Take advice, but then come back with questions. If somebody says, I like Turntable X, why? What else did you like? What else did you compare it with? What sort of music do you like? What does sound mean to you? Do you, do you prefer bassy stuff? Do you like, are you, do you like your mid-range and treble a bit brighter? Are you a, a more a sort of neutral balance? Because all that is part of who they are. That's all part of their opinion. And how they think and how they see music might be different to you. So, really, you shouldn't really be talking to these guys. If somebody's musical expectations are way off to your own, are completely different to your own, then you shouldn't really be talking to this person, then, should you? Because whatever they recommend is great for their ears, but not yours. So you need to get to know who you're talking to on social media. Don't just accept any old advice. Take it apart. Take the advice apart. Come back with questions. Filter, filter, filter. Okay? And don't just go to one social media platform or one group. Do the butterfly thing. Go from one thing to, an, to another. Talk to lots and lots of people. You will find two or three people who, again, are sympathetic, think like you, approach music and hi-fi in a similar way to you. It's like finding your own critic. Find the guys on social media who... You know, they're moving in the same direction as you. A lot of people just won't be your style. They won't think like you. They're, they're, they'll think maybe opposite to you. Okay? So, filter. So, what's the bottom line here? Firstly, take responsibility for your purchase decisions. Don't let anybody else decide for you. Okay? You decide what you want to buy. That's the first thing. Secondly, use your ears. They're the most sensitive pieces of equipment you've got to hand. Okay? Rely on them. Trust them. 
These are the things that are going to be listening to the hi-fi anyway. These are the things that are going to be listening to the music you love anyway through this desired piece of hi-fi kit that you're going to buy. Use them. Trust them. That's the second thing. Thirdly, never buy anything while you have doubts. Always be certain. If you walk up to the counter with your credit card, think, have I done everything? Have I talked to everybody I can think of? Is there anywhere else I can get some advice? Is there any way I can cross-reference anything? If there's any doubts in your head, stop, backtrack, do it, and then come back. He'll still be here the next day. Then come back and then buy. And then you'll have more certainty. You'll have more confidence in your buying decision. Okay? And that's it. If I've forgotten anything, let me know. Comment below, please. That'd be great. I appreciate that. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.